Hey, good evening. Good evening. We're here. We made it. Yes. All right. It's rainy, but we're here. <laughs> Let's get into a word of prayer, and we're going to get into a lesson on this evening. Um, watch me on social media. Share, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we are live. I believe we're live. Yeah, we're live. Had to make sure. Um, and we have audio on the speaker, which is good. So, that being said, let's get into a word of prayer. Let's get into our lesson. Gracious Father, we thank you this evening for keeping us all throughout the day. Father, as, as the world continues to move, but we begin to recognize the true impact, the financial impact, the employment impact, the health impact, the, the impact to our peace, we ask right now, God, that you allow us to be preserved during this time. We ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless us so that we can do what you have called for us to do. We ask that you allow the sun to set still in the sky until our portion of the battle is over. And when that happens, God, or whether it happens or not, we'll always be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that it richly deserves. Now, Father, bless those who are here. Bless those that are en route. Bless those that are watching via social media. Allow their time to be spent wisely. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, want to get into a couple of quick things this evening. And it's funny because I always say I want to get into a couple of quick things this evening, knowing that we're going to get into the full lesson. Right? So, I want to get this brought up for you. All right. So, tonight, we're going to come in from Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew 15. And as we come into Matthew 15, I'm going to ask you that you would scroll down to the 21st verse. And this is where we're going to start at. And I'm going to make sure we have the full verse up. We're actually going to do all the way down to verse 28. So Matthew 15, 21 through 28. And if we're watching online, you know, it's not going to display the way it ought to. So I'm going to adjust it here. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. You see that where it says, Send her away because she cries after us. Now, I could have swore that she was only talking to one person. But, you know, we yet get beside ourselves. So it says, Send her away because she cries after us. And it goes further to say, but he answered and say, I am not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered, saying, it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. You see where it says that? That's kind of a cold thing, ain't it? You can't be casting the children's meat to the dogs. And he goes further with her words and says, And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, saying to her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. All right. Here's what we need to look at. This is a woman, a Canaanite woman, who had an issue. We recognize that she had an issue. And during that time, it, it came a question. She knew who Jesus was. Now, many times as we look at the text, it always talks about Jesus being sent to the children of Israel, to the house of Israel, but it was not exclusive the miracles that Jesus worked. Okay? This is why, as we look in the text, 
This woman who was not of the house of Israel, though Jesus was sent to the house of Israel, understood the power for healing and restoration that Jesus, who was sent to the house of Israel, had. Many of us think that we are not in line for a blessing. We didn't go to the right church. We didn't know the right things to say. We don't look like church folk. You know, we don't act like church folk, okay? But the truth of the matter is that we know that God is no respecter of person. If he did it in the lives of one person, he'll do it in your life. So this woman who by all intents and purposes should not be approaching him for anything if we were going by the current model of I'm sent only to the house of Israel. Now, Jesus himself did this as a test of her faith. Many times we want to see uh, God wants to put you in a position to where you can be tested, but not so much that you get discouraged because if you really want it, you won't allow anybody to discourage you. You really want the job, you'll do what you need to be able to do to get the job. You really want the house, you'll do what you need to be able to do to get the house. You want the car, you may not get discouraged because the first one may not look the way you want it to look, but if God has it for you, he'll have it for you. I give an example, personally. There's a lot of things that we're looking at right now. We're right, as they would say in the church, betwixt and between transition in several areas of our life, right? Uh, because of that, sometimes it can get a little discouraging. But I'm here to tell you that even though it can look discouraging, that we are still yet believers that God is always in control. And what he has for us in this season is truly for us. Now, here's the thing. These are the things that we're hoping for in the midst of this transition are what we used to be able to call hope behind, beyond hope, right? Um, they're what we used to call stretch goals, but they're right in our grasp. But if we give up because we hit a snag here, then were we really ready to receive the blessing? Right. So imagine it. Uh, prime example. Most people do not go and get or don't receive the very first house they look at. I think realtors kind of do that on purpose to see what they can get you into to see what you really want. OK. I remember uh, there was a house that Pastor Ellen and I went to go see. And this house, we're looking all over the place and can't find one bathtub. And I'm like, hmm. Had a little walk-in shower. I'm like, okay. Another walk-in shower, not one bathtub. And I'm amazed. I'm like, hmm. Where are we supposed to bathe the baby? Because at the time, Pastor L had to be about five months pregnant. Were you about five months pregnant with Jasmine at that time? We went to see that house on uh, over by, off of, on the east side. The red one that looks like a Swiss chalet with no bathtub. So where, where do we bathe the baby? We can't throw the baby in the shower, the baby not born. You put the baby in the sink, then you put the baby in the bathtub, right? Um, so that was just one of the properties we looked at. You fast forward, there's a lot of times that we get discouraged because the first thing that we're shown is not what we expect for it to be but that's sometimes your Elam, or your place of rest, but not your promised land, okay? This woman, whose daughter was vexed with the devil, she was sick, as you begin to look in the text, the first answer she got was not the answer that she wanted. For many of you, the first answer you get when you go into that next level of your life, when you're looking for that change, looking for that transition, is not the answer you wanna receive. And sometimes, if you're not prepared for anything uh, other than a yes, sometimes you'll hear a no, but, and you'll get discouraged by it. If you're not prepared for it, it can throw you off the track or dissuade you from going further. But you have to be prepared for either one of three answers. There's going to be a no, a not yet, or a yes. 
I like this woman. And the reason why I like her is because she received, an, first off, she received nothing. If you read the text, it says she asked Jesus, she greeted him, she gave him all of the accolades, son of David. Let's look at it right there. It says this, it says, have mercy, O Lord, thou son of David. She knew his lineage, she knew his background. She greeted him and anticipated an answer. She gave him her situation. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil, but he answered her not a word. Can you be in a position and want what God has for you enough that when you greet God, when you ask God, when you come to God, God doesn't answer you? Can you still persevere even in the face of no answer whatsoever or a no? Can you think about that? So in ministry, in life, in marriage, in finance, sometimes no answer is a part of the test. You ask somebody to do something for you. They look at you, but yet don't acknowledge you. Do you get discouraged? So let's go further. So the first time, Jesus said nothing. But his disciples who came and besought him saying, send her away for she cries after us. Let, let me, this reminds me of Job, right? Because in the midst of your struggle and your turmoil, somebody always got to open their mouth and say something. Ain't nobody asking. Ain't nobody asking these jokers nothing. Ain't nobody said nothing. He didn't say nothing, which if you're following proper protocol in ministry, that means it's not your place to say nothing either. I didn't ask for an advocate. I didn't ask for a mouthpiece. I didn't ask you to speak on my behalf. I didn't do what Prince did where he would whisper in somebody else's ear and they would talk for him. I didn't say nothing, so you don't say nothing, right? Here's what I love about Jesus and the examples that he left. The first example that he left was are you prepared not to receive an answer even when you cry out because no answer could very well be a test. The second is when you look at the disciples responding and she didn't ask the disciples not one doggone thing, Jesus doesn't acknowledge them either. Because your relationship with God is not predicated on the noise that may happen to be around you. He didn't answer you, so that means that you may need to pray harder, you may need to fast longer, you may need to turn down your plate, you may need to turn off your phone, you may need to pull back from Facebook, you may need to get up off of that TikTok, you may need to do something to pull you away from what's pulling you away from God. Mm. Let me say that again. You need to do something that pulls you away from what's pulling you away from God. We live life with so many distractions, with noise. We live life with so many issues. And guess what? So many people don't seem to understand that these are but distractions that prevent us from hearing, receiving, and, and, and actually walking in what God would have us to walk in. So the lesson that's given, point number one is, are you prepared for no answer? Point number two is, don't be distracted by the noise. Jesus did not acknowledge the fact that his disciples, who were, as we used to say back in the day, and I say regularly, completely out of pocket. They overstepped their boundaries. What they used to say on Seinfeld, they were habitual line steppers, meaning they had a tendency of overstepping the line habitually, right? Meaning it became such a habit for them. Does, they're crying after us. She didn't ask you nothing. Right? She spoke, O Lord, thou son, singularity of David. She did not say, thou sons of De Zebedee, you wonderful fishermen. Hey, you, Levi, you tax collector. Hey, you, Judas, I know you. I see you. I see you. You with the box. She didn't do any of that. She said, O Lord, thou son of David. And she, she sought her case. Now, even afterwards, then he answered and said, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
I'm sent to the lost sheep. I'm sent to those ones that were praying for Yahshua HaMashiach, that were praying for the Messiah. I'm sent to those ones that, that have not been scattered as of yet, but are lost without someone to redeem them as they've gone through all the stresses and strains that were predetermined for them to go through because of their disobedience. I'm sent to those individuals right there. And then she came and worshiped. Point number one, can you be prepared for no answer? Point number two, don't be distracted by the noise. Point number three, can you stand the no? Okay, can you stand the no? He told her, I'm not sent to the, I am but sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not for everybody right now. Here's where I'm at, which means I can't help you. But let's look at what she did. And again, this is why I like this woman. Because when you look at what she said, she didn't say anything to the contrary. She didn't get discouraged. The Bible says, then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. She then came and worshiped. You done got ignored. You done have people talking against what you're doing. You done heard no, but can you still worship God? Can you still be in a point to where what you want you have not yet received, but can you still worship him anyway? That's a big thing as we talk about the maturity of life, as we talk about what it means to be a Christian, being able to worship God, even in the midst of all of the negativity, in the midst of the noise, in the midst of being ignored, can you still come and worship him even though you may get discouraged, even though you may get sometimes distracted? Can you still come and put your holy hands up on the shame and say, Lord, help me, I'm standing in the need of prayer? Can you still yet do that even when it doesn't look like what you want it to look like? This woman has a child and as a parent, you recognize when your child is in danger, when your child is in jeopardy, you will move heaven and earth to get that child help. But when you find that you're running up against a wall and you can't help that child, you can get discouraged. But in this circumstance, this woman left the example that you ought not get discouraged. You ought not be downtrodden. You ought not be feeling dismal. You can't have a pity party. It says that she came and she worshiped him. Can you still worship even when it looks worse? Because I'd rather have you ignore me than tell me no. Maybe you didn't hear me. So I may ask you again, but to tell me no, it meant that you heard what I said, you acknowledged me, and you denied me. No is a hurtful thing. Some of us don't like to hear the word no. We got some spoiled kids. You tell them no, they look like you're speaking Swahili, Greek, and Latin all at one time. Because you can't possibly be saying no to me. Huh? Listen, we got some adults don't like being told no. You say no. It, I'm sorry, what? And the blinking starts. I'm sorry, what? What, you got something in your eye? I said no. I said no. Is that a spasm? Do we need to see a neurologist? Because obviously the blinking has to stop somewhere. I said no. Can you still come and worship God? Even... Can you worship when it looks worse? So she came, she worshiped him, said, Lord, help me. Not only, and see, I love the fact that God does things in threes. He ignored her. The ignoring is a no. He told her no. She asked for help and he said, it's not meat, meaning it's not time to take the bread of the children for the house of Israel and cast it to the dogs. Not only did you ignore me, not only did you tell me no, but now you call me a dog. My God, my God. We would be ready to tussle, fight, lock horns, and scrap. Somebody call you a dog? Wow, because dogs were considered low. Now, for some odd reason during that time, they liked cats. So I couldn't live in that time frame. The Egyptian loved cats. You know, the dogs they weren't really worried about. I don't like cats. Y'all continue to pray for me. Jalen keeps asking me, Dad, can we get a cat? Not while you're living in my house. I don't like cats. I'm sorry, I just don't like them. We got one at my job. He come rubbing it. Yeah, they're gone now. Uh, mm -mm. I don't like cats. Pastor Ella be like, is that that cat in the back? Mm, that's that cat you hear. That doggone cat. Mm -hmm. They say the cat blind. I watched him watch this squirrel climbing up a tree. They said he blind. He can't see me. That's why I don't trust him, because they sneaky. 
he fooling him, making him think he's blind. He just ain't want to look at you. So during that time, cats were, re re were uh, esteemed higher than dogs. So she's being called a dog. She's being ignored. She's being told no. She's being called a dog, but she still had a retort. When you are in this situation and what you need to get from God, you really need to be able to get, can you still stand there? Instead of saying, I'm going to fast from 7 to 7, if God has not responded to you, say, I'm going to fast from 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. If God has not responded to you, I'm going to pray from 7 a.m. to 7.15 and 8.15 and 9.15. Can you increase the intensity of your worship? Can you increase the intensity of your prayer life? Can you increase the intensity for you to be able to get what God is trying to give you because it's not that he doesn't want to give it to you, but how bad do you want it? How bad do you want your marriage to last? How bad do you want your children? What lengths will you go to to keep your children safe? What lengths? Jasmine is a very social kid. People like Jasmine. Jasmine likes people. She has a set group of friends. Uh, there's about six of them. You know, we're out in the area that we're in. You know, they like to hang out. They know each other's houses. They're all within four or five blocks, one way or the other of each other. I give Jasmine set times to be in the house. Hey, listen, I know it's getting darker. You know, we can't really go with the street lights, but I know that you're at someone's house. So by this time, you're either calling or you're already walking in the door. We're coming in the house. It gets to three minutes beyond that time. I'm in the car. Well, what's going on? My child is not where they should be at. And in this environment, I need to make sure that she's safe. She says, I can defend myself, which she can, but it don't take but two people, you know, because she can get a few good hits in. But after that, she in the back of the white panel van with the green carpeting. OK, it's my job to avoid that. So I crisscross our neighborhood on a grid. I call. Doesn't answer the phone. Now I'm going to people's houses, I'm outside honking. She's like, you're very overprotective. No, as a father, it's my responsibility to ensure your safety until you can ensure your own safety. And even then, I'm always gonna be there. That's a commitment I made as a father. You know, a lot of times people, they don't realize and they don't understand, you know, when you're younger, it's obtrusive. You know, this young lady may not have understood the lengths that her mother was going to in order to get her the help that she needs. Your children may not understand the lengths that you're going to. People connected to you that are just noise in your ear may not understand the lengths that you'll go to to get from God what you need to get from God. And as they're chatting in your ear and telling you all this stuff, it's easy to get discouraged, distracted. It's easy to be disappointed. But can you keep going? Because what you need to be able to get is greater than the no. What you need to be able to get is greater than being ignored. What you're being able to get, what you're striving for, what you're pressing for is greater than being called out your name. Because guess what? When he called her a dog, they called him much worse. So this is the example. What you're trying to get to is greater than the negativity surrounding it. And if you're wise, you'll pay attention to the little subtle clues that God is giving you not to give up. It never said that he was rude. He just made the statements. It never said he was angry. He just made the statements. It never said that he was being disrespectful, even though the words may have been disrespectful. We don't see Jesus ever being uh, uh, portrayed as being a disrespectful orator. He never speaks the words out of anger with the exception of when he goes into the temple and he says, you have turned my father's house into a den of iniquity. And even then you have to look at the principle that was being displayed. It was not the fact that you could not provide commerce. It was the fact that you weren't dealing well with your brother or with your sister because you were now charging interest on those things that should be a flat rate, okay? You needed the doves in the temple because that was your sacrifice prior to Jesus making the ultimate sacrifice. But you can't charge 25 points on the VIG for that. You see what I'm saying? It's not something you should do. So when he spoke, he wasn't a disrespectful orator. He was giving you the word of God. 
in such a way and giving you the example. If this is what you want to do, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to upset your apple cart and let you know what you're doing is wrong, right? So at no point was he that disrespectful orator that people would try to portray. So even in the midst of him saying what he said to her, it was said in such a way that her retort touched him in such a way, right? She said, let's look at it. And it's going to be in verse 27. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. You ignored me. You told me no. You called me a dog. But I want what I need to have so much that I'm going to bypass that. And I'm going to tell you what I need to tell you that I don't need the full blessing that's reserved from the children of Israel. Sometimes all I need is but a crumb. Because the Bible says that if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, which is small, that means if your faith is good like that, that means that the blessing of the Lord, all I need is a crumb. You can just give me a tidbit. You can just give me a smidgen. You can just give me a particle of the presence of God and allow me to have this which I'm asking for. So even the dogs, even the little puppies, even the little curs, as they would be called, will eat of the, the crumbs that fall off the master's table. We have a puppy at our house who's actually not a puppy anymore. She's an old lady, okay? The dog's age, what is it, seven years for every year, so she's 56 years old. And she don't jump like she used to, but let something fall off that table. She good. She won't touch that dog food, but let a piece of hot dog, a piece of cheese, let a piece of uh, whatever it is fall off that table. Because here's the thing, they understand that I don't need the whole thing, just give me a little bit. Because a little bit is all I'm asking for. I came to you and you ignored me, but I just need a little bit. I came to you and you told me no, but I just need a little bit. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm just trying to change my individual situation. But what God was trying to show in this particular portion of text as he worked with Jesus and he worked with this woman that happened to be from Canaan, what you end up seeing is the fact that it was a testing of the faith that she had because Jesus acknowledges and said, O oh, woman, great is thou faith. Now, she's not even supposed to be one of the people that's supposed to receive by faith. But here's the thing that you have to look at. The people who were actually receiving and the people that were actually being blessed, very rarely does it say it was the people that Jesus went to. Very rarely is it going to be the person that has that perfectly knotted tie. Very rarely is it going to be the person whose hair has been fried, dyed, and laid to the side. Very rarely is it going to be that, that gifted orator that's able to untie the holy text and be able to go through in such a perfectly polished position that their presence is a preponderance of the, of the prognostication of the gospel. Very rarely is it that person. It's the one that says, I don't care whatever you do. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. It's the person that says I just need you to bless me a little bit it's the person that says I just need you to touch me a little bit it's the person that will crawl on the ground and said I just need to touch but the hem of his garment and I shall be made whole it's the person that's willing to get up out of the pigsty and said I'm going to go back to my father's house because which one of the servants is faring better it's that one that one individual that's willing to go above and beyond what they've been doing that's getting the blessing and Jesus told her great is your faith be it unto thee even as thou will whatever you're standing in need of if you trust God if you acknowledge the fact you just need a little bit of help if you acknowledge the fact that even in the presence of a no I'm still going to worship if you acknowledge the fact that even in the point of being ignored, I'm still going to press on a little bit further. The song used to say, I'm pressing up the king's highway. Amen. That's what the song used to say. Or we used to sing it like this in the lodge. Uh, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob. Every round goes higher and higher. And we had to identify the fact that we were soldiers of the cross. So as we begin to press and as we begin to move and as we begin to acknowledge the fact that sometimes we're not going to get the response that we want, but it's the response that we need right at that moment. We're not going to get exactly what we want, but we get exactly what we need. Can you stand in the face of being ignored? Can you stand in the face 
of the noise? Can you stand in the face of the no? Can you stand in the face of the disrespect to get what God has for you? I don't know about you, but I don't want people to dictate what I get from God. I don't want them to ever be able to say you don't deserve it because here's the thing. You don't have a heaven nor a hell to place me in. So you can't tell me what I deserve and what I don't deserve. Because as a matter of fact, the last time I checked, we serve the one and true living God, meaning that you, ma'am, you, sir, are inconsequential when it comes to me receiving my blessings. DMX said it like this in the movie called Belly written by Hype Williams. He said, born by myself, die by myself. He said it. And that's what happened. But that's what we have to begin to look at. Even if you're a twin, you come out individually. And when it comes time for God's blessing, the favor of the Lord is not fair. The favor of the Lord can move mountains. The favor of the Lord can open doors that you thought previously closed. The favor of the Lord can shift in such a way that when you worship him, even when it looks worse, when you praise him, even when it looks like a problem, when you put yourself in that position to where you say, I'm going to do this even if it makes me uncomfortable. That's when you begin to receive the blessing. Can you keep going and not give up? It's so easy to give up. It's easy to give up. It's easy to quit. It's easy to say, forget it. I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm, going to, I'm just going to stop, okay? Because it shouldn't be this hard. Nobody told you that the road would be easy, but he didn't bring me this far to leave me. That was such a prophetic song. The prophecy of life is that sometimes you're going to have a tough way to go. Can you keep going? The prophecy of life is that sometimes it's not going to feel good. It's not always going to look good. You're going to get ignored. You're going to be told no. You're going to hear the noise. Here's my biggest thing. I get tired of the noise. I get tired of people always telling other people what to do when they're not what we call subject matter experts in that particular field. Especially during this pandemic, I didn't realize so many people had so many PhDs and working in these, working at McDonald's, Burger King or working at, at, at a group home or what have you. I didn't know you had a PhD in immunology. I didn't know that you were a virologist, that you were so intelligent that you obtained your PhD in the limited amount of time, at least six to eight weeks through the internet mail, and now you're qualified to be able to tell me about my health and wellness. God bless you, I wanna take the same course. I have no time for individuals that don't have the same level or a greater level of understanding about what it is I'm going through to give me advice on what I should do. This is the noise, and somewhat, sometimes the noise is so boisterous, right? So loud, so magnanimous, that when you begin to hear it, it drowns out the voice of God. They began to yell, send her away because she calls after us. The noise is a distraction. The noise is designed to throw you off track. You ever remember seeing these old, um, these old westerns? And I'm gonna tell my age on it. You'll watch like Cheyenne. We're not, everybody is used to watching uh, 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 Doggone Lone Ranger. You're gonna watch Gunsmoke. You're gonna watch Have Gun, Will Travel, Bonanza Ponderosa, Cheyenne. You're gonna end up watching a couple of the other ones. Uh, uh, what's that one with the, the, not Petticoat Junction. What's the one? Big Valley. Big, woo! Big Valley. That's another one. And they'll be in the hollow. Or they say, we're going to meet you in the hollow. We're, they'll be in the hollow, and they're trying to set an ambush. And when they set the ambush, in order to distract something, they'll throw a rock over here 
to take the to take the focus away from here where they should be focused. They'll throw a rock, or they'll do one of. <laughs> you know, ain't no macaw monkey in the middle of Cheyenne, Wyoming. But you look over, huh? It's a distraction. The noise is a distraction. But can you press? The noise is a distraction. It's designed for you to not focus on what God is having you to focus on. I'm going to tell you this. You're probably not going to. I'm going to say it anyway. Some of the people in your life were sent as a distraction, not as a deliverance. I think that's the quietest I've ever heard. Some of the people in your life were sent as a distraction, not as a deliverance. Because you've made so much progress in the things that God would have for you that the enemy says, I can't throw you off track on my own. I need a little help. As you're praying and saying, I need a little more Jesus, he's, pray he's saying, he's praying, P-R-E-Y-N-G, and saying, praying on you and saying, I got just what you need. Because as you're praying, he knows what you want, not just what you need. God knows what you need, not just not what you want. Okay? So as, he's, as you're going through and you're like, Father, thank you very much. I thank you for the blessings you're giving me. You've been blessing me. We're moving. We're progressing. We're doing the things you have for us. Father, thank you. And then all of a sudden, hey, girl, how you doing? What you been up to? Oh, me, you know. How Alexander O'Neill said, Danny. You know, I just, no, Rick James. Oh, you know, I just been doing what I do. You know, I got me a new lady now, but she's not you. Right? Or for the men. Ooh, you've been working out. This pandemic been good to you, boo. What you been up to? Oh, you know, I've been praying. I've been going to church. I've been doing all of this. Oh, that's what's up. I need me a God-fearing man. Mm -hmm. And you think that it was designed to take you to the next level, but it was designed to distract you, and God will show you little red flags. I'm so sick of these red flags on Facebook, but I understand. God will put these little red flags up and say, listen, warning, warning, warning. This is not the one for you. Little red flags. It's a distraction. It's noise to throw you off track. It's that little over in the canyon okay can you stand in the face of the noise can you stay focused that though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death can you still not fear evil because you ever notice um, when it's daytime on these old movies and I love old movies because they had some of the cheesiest sound effects you ever watch like a good Laurel and Hardy movie and all of a sudden, as you're watching this Laurel and Hardy movie, I can't talk about everybody about it, but I know I can talk to a few people that just watched a good Laurel and Hardy movie. And as they're going through this dark area, they start hearing like the horsemen. Ain't no horses around. Or they start hearing knocking. Ain't no doors. Little things sent to distract you. Can you go through the valley of the shadow of death and still yet not fear any evil? I don't know... Somebody needs to know that you got to be able to stand in the face of the noise. You have to be able to stand in the face of the noise. You've endured the being ignored. That's fine. I know how to deal with that. You've endured being told no because you kept pressing. But it's the noise that's distracting you. It's the noise. And sometimes the noise is not external. It's internal. The internal noise is the hardest thing to deal with. That internal noise is what's telling you you're not good enough, you're not designed for it, you're not purpose, you never find happiness, you never find love, you never get married, you will get married but you'll be miserable, you never find any of the things that God has already promised you because if he promises it to you, if he showed it to you, he will come to pass but the noise is telling you you don't deserve it. Here's the thing, and I, always, I, I love being transparent, I love being transparent, I love laughing in the face of the noise that said I would never accomplish because the Bible says that you'll prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. So even when I get discouraged, I know that the table is prepared. 
And the same people that said you will never have to say, how did you ever? They got to see it. They got to see it. The same people that were like, oh, man, you know, uh, when I was going through uh, housing vulnerability, that's how they call it nowadays. When I went through housing vulnerability and I said that no one ever would have that level of control over me again. And I've made sure that no matter what happens, my head will always rest on the pillow. Okay? Now, why is that important? And Pastor Ella tell you, I get mad when I fall asleep on the couch. Get mad. Jump up. Everybody go to bed. We would sleep. Why are you bothering us? Hey, right or wrong, though. Everybody got to go to bed. Everybody go sleep in the bed. Jalen would be like, my bed messy. Clear it off. Get in the bed. I'll go lay down in the bed. Now I ain't tired because I'm angry. But the purpose behind that is I said I would always rest my head on the pillow. Because I listened to the noise that said that, uh, that, that, that laughed when I went through my bouts. I listened to the noise that said you'll never accomplish. I listened to the noise and I say even in spite of what you said, I want you to see what God has done. I want you to clearly see as a matter of fact, turn on your TV, Google me, figure it out. If you need to figure it out, look in your mailers, you'll figure it out. You Got to be able to stand in the face of the external noise and the internal noise. The internal noise is what people have said. It rests with you. You don't know to doubt yourself until somebody else doubts you and puts that seed on the inside of you. You don't know that you're not supposed to have until somebody tells you you're not supposed to have. Because as a child, you think you can have everything, right? You know, a prime example. These wonderful kids of mine really believe that in the backyard, in the hollow of the tree, is an unending source of money. That every time I stick my hole in this leprechaun hole, that I'm pulling out gobs of money that they can go shopping with. So if I say no, that's when the, the neurological disorder of the blinking, the not understanding, does not compute mindset comes about. Right? Love this little girl. You see how she's looking at me? You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Looks over. I haven't seen no sneakers in like six weeks. Don't know where they were. They just happened up in the living room. You know, more expensive than my sneakers. I think I paid, I don't know where my sneakers are, by the way. You think you paid for your own sneakers, but I got you the job. So when we begin to look at it, because that's what a good father does. When you begin to look at it, got those, when I was growing up, that one pair of sneakers, Danny, you kept them jokers clean uh, all throughout that school year. You got you that toothbrush and that little cup with the warm water and the bleach. And you kept them jokers clean. You got that white washcloth and you wiped them off and you set them up there. You made sure the, that soul was up there. You set them on top of the box or back in the box. And you kept them jokers clean. I ain't seen them shoes in six weeks. Goes and buys two more pair of shoes. Two more. Not going to tell you how much, but two more. And then says, can we go shopping? Because I didn't get any school clothes. I'm like, wait a minute. So you legitimately spent more money than I used to get in the year for school clothes on three pair of shoes that are going to touch the ground and lose value immediately. I could have got you some, 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 I know pro cads expensive now too. I could have got you some, not even pro cads, just cads. The little skippers. You know, you could have went around and kicked in them. Your feet not on the ground, they, you know, your toes ain't exposed, able to go from there. But here's the thing. They think that it grows on trees because even in the face of that internal voice saying that I wasn't going to be a good father, right? I purposed myself to be the father that I needed at their age. Those are those internal voices, right? 
you're not going to accomplish. You're going to be just like, you know, and again, transparency. I've been, you're going to be just like your father. Well, I don't have a frame of reference for that. So I'm going to go with everything that I didn't see is what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to go to a football game for my oldest son, even though he has never been on the field and his uniform is still pristine clean. That's when he played football for his team. Never got a grass stain. He got off the bench to say, go, go, run, right? But I'm still going to go. Getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning to watch your daughter at her AAU tournament do the shot that you told her over the phone to do from the corner and hit their drain all day because I didn't have a father coming to my football games when I'm trying to run people over. You see what I'm saying? So I wanted to become the father because the internal voices told me I couldn't. The external voices told me I couldn't. When I was, when I was a kid, I thought I could accomplish everything until people started talking and telling me I couldn't accomplish. And that's the thing that we begin to look at, right? With these kids, you know, in their eyes, they can accomplish everything because they haven't been jaded. You understand what I'm saying? We get jaded because the noise, internal, external. We get jaded and we start getting discouraged. But this particular portion of text is showing you that even when you get discouraged, you still have to keep pressing because God will bless you. God will move you from where you are to where he needs you to be. But guess what? He doesn't need your permission to do so. He just needs your faith, right? So in closing, we look at it, it says, and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. From the moment she exercised her faith beyond the being ignored, beyond the noise, beyond the no, beyond the disrespect, be, the moment she still exercised her faith, she still worshiped, she still came to God and said, even the dogs will receive the crumbs from the master's table and I only need just a little bit. When she exercised that level of faith, from that very moment, she had what she came there for. Now imagine it was already done in God's eyes because Jesus, being God, wrapped in the flesh, was able to see the end from the beginning. So he knew what she was going to say. He just wanted to see if she was going to say it. God knows what you can accomplish if you put your faith to it. But you also have to be able and willing to put your works to it. Because faith without works is dead. So in this season, what do you believe in God for? And can you endure beyond all the negativity and still keep pressing your way? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you right now for this word, for this lesson that has gone before. And we ask you in the name of your son, Jesus, that you continue to bless us, keep us, guide us, direct us as only you can. We pray this word got down in somebody's spirit and that somebody's life was transformed and that somebody got the answer they needed for the burning questions of their life. Now, Father, we ask that you would allow us to continue on in the word of God as only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people say amen. Amen. amen.